Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop for another Four Ways Collaboration uh, video. Uh, I think today's project is going to be a, a good one for you. It's going to be a wig stand and it's a great beginner project because it combines not only cross graining work as if you were turning a bowl, but also uh, center work as you turn the turn the post. So you got spindle work and, and bowl kind of turning work and in addition you got a little joinery exercise which is a, uh, a great skill to, to learn. So. Uh, be sure to watch the other members' videos because we're all going to have a little different take on it, uh, not only in, in probably in process and technique, but also in, in design, so it'll give you some new ideas. So when it comes to wood, most any type of hardwood will work fine. Actually, you could probably use a softer wood like, like pine. Uh, easiest way to get dried wood appropriate is go to the sawmill and get some eight-quarter lumber uh, and mill it up, similar to this piece of a quarter cherry that finishes out at one and seven eighths inch uh, thick. This one happened to be six and a quarter inches wide, which was plenty, plenty big. And as a result of milling it up, so you're gonna, you're gonna uh, cut, cut a top on the bandsaw, and you're gonna, which is gonna be about five inches square by however thick it is, two inches, one and seven eighths, or you know, 125 millimeter by 125 millimeter by about 45 to 55 millimeter. Uh, the base is going to be a little bit bigger so you'll have a nice stable platform to hold it so it won't get tipsy. It's going to be about 6 inches by 6 inches. Again, uh, cutting it round on the bandsaw and finishing out at about 150 mil by 150 mil uh, square and cut it round 150 millimeter diameter. And it's about, again, about 45 to 55 millimeters uh, thick. The center post is going to be uh, oh, approximately two inches. You could make it as small as an inch and a half. Uh, make it somewhere around nine and a half to ten and a half inches long or somewhere around 50 millimeter square by 240 millimeter plus. Uh, again, this is out of a nice uh, piece of milled uh, lumber from the lumber yard. Uh, you can get it out of rough, rough wood out of your bowl blank stash. These have been in my shop for some time. They're dry. Uh, this is mystery wood, not sure what it is, but it's uh, about five inches by about two and a half inches thick, but I'm going to lose probably a little bit on the side. No, maybe not on the top. The base uh, is six inches, but I'm probably going to lose a little bit on the side because it's kind of thin. But it's three inches thick, so I'll be able to still get a nice stable base. And then i got a piece of dried sweet gum that's been in my shop for a while, about two inches square, about the same size as this. So either route will work. Um, just get you some... Get you some lumber and go at it. And then I like to take my bore brush and clean out the spindle. Just to make sure there's no debris in there that'll damage the morse, morse tapers I'm going to use. Uh, so I'm going to start off between centers. I like to use a stab center. Uh, I've, I've been using a Robert Sorby, but I really like this one by Record Power because you can adjust the tension on it. And it, and it uh, a little bit... Uh, Cost a little bit less than the than the Robert Sorby. You can get it in in, in, the, in different sizes, so I, I think this is a good good value if you need a stead center. All right, I've got this rough sawn blank uh, centered, uh, roughly centered, and the easiest way to center for me for something like this rough like this is to have a little make you a little uh, template, and you just equally distribute the outer outer ring that, that that's the appropriate size and get that centered. And there you go. So. Because this is a bowl, I want to put on my face shield. And we're going to go ahead and face this off and get it, get it round. I'm using a 3 8 inch bowl gouge, or what the British might call a half inch. Hold that. center I've measured this with some calipers and I know that this that size will give me a nice size tenon that matches my normal jaw so I can visually look here across and tell when I'm getting there. So now I've made a tenon now let's shape the rest of the 
This is going to be the top, but we're going to put a tenon so we can reverse chuck it. and clean. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a little bit off the back side to kind of square it up to get a little better feel for that shape. I've got a tiny little crack here. It's internal probably wouldn't cause me problems but I want this to be a smooth surface for that wig so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a little bit of uh, shellac based sanding sealer or finishing on there to keep the CA glue from staining and then I'm just going to put a couple of drops of, of thin CA and just let it fill it in and then while it's still drying, I'm going to take whatever coarse sandpaper I have handy, and then I'm just going to kind of sand it to rub in a little bit of sawdust in there to give me a fill in that surface. But that shellac keeps the CA from seeping in around the sides and staining it uh, for the final finish. Okay, now we're going to reverse chuck it using that tendon that, that I made there. Power SC4 with the standard standard jaws calls for a parallel tenon, not a dovetail. But you got to use whatever the manufacturer recommends for your particular chuck. Don't don't assume everything doesn't require a dovetail. So I press it in from the center, tighten it up. I, I can tell I can't get a piece of paper in between the chuck jaws and the face, so I've got a nice tenon. I'm going to go ahead and now face this off. Remove the live center. straight in for a little bit. Just on this uneven surface. And then come in here and do a slight concave. recess here so we can reverse chuck it to finish the top and then I'm also going to drill a hole a hole for that post. I set, I set my dividers to the appropriate recess size. Try to line this side up with this side. This end touches, this one does not. I'm 
we're going to use a recess tool, but first I'm going to go ahead and take out just, you only have to go down about an eighth of an inch, I'll just take out just a little bit of, a little bit of wood here. Now I'm going to use my shop made uh, dovetail tool for recesses. Speed up a little bit. And we're just going to push it straight in. about an eighth of an inch thick that ought to hold it it might ought to fit my chuck now I'm going to drill a hole uh, probably you know somewhere between five eighths five eighths to one inch deep you know the size uh, hole you make it really depends on you know what you you want what kind of drill bit you got convenient um, I think I may use one inch drill bit just because I don't have to go to any trouble to find this since it's mounted right here for lathe and I can just put it in the tailstock. I'll measure it I'll measure it right here and I'll go down I think maybe it's got a little bit of taper to it so I want to go down at least three quarters of an inch. Probably it's as deep as this is I probably want to go down an inch. Slow the speed down just a little bit. Keep my fingers away from the sharp flute, but I want to kind of know if it's going to spin on Okay. Now, this is a, a pretty thick top, thicker than probably it needs to be, so I think what I want to do is go ahead and do some hollowing here just to reduce the weight. Uh, if it was only 1 and 7 8 cents thick like that mill cherry, that probably wouldn't be necessary. Or I could just take this down further, but then I'd have to start over with a hole in the recess. So I think that'll be fine. So I'm just going to cove out from here to here. Since this is a bowl, normally you're going to go from the outside to the inside with hollowing, so that's what I'm going to do. enough to hold it to do the outside. It's kind of thin, but I think it'll work. Alright, so I pinned it out some, and I think I could probably go ahead and take this down some. And nip that corner so it won't be sharp. And touch that up with some sanding and then we'll be ready to reverse it and finish the other side. So I've sanded the underside so now let's go ahead and reverse chuck it using that recess. I think I can take this. This is so thick. I think I can take it down a little bit. Let's see how thick is it. Yeah. Yeah. When I remove this, I can take this down another quarter of an inch and still have plenty of room. I'm going to come straight in and get rid of this tenon.
Okay. Now, again, this is bowl orientation, so we go from small to large. Nothing a little sandy won't take care of. Now we're going to go ahead and come around, make this kind of a hemispherical shape. I'm going to put this about 45 degrees. And tail stock back out of the way. And just start picking up that cut and bring it around. And, hey, Drew, this 3 eighths. I think I'd be better off with a half inch spindle gouge. All right, that double to the truck. I'm just going to get a little bit of a gap here. I think I'm just going to do a straight cut around here. And now I can probably switch to a shear scraper. Be a little bit smoother. Bring this up just a little bit. So I'll be in the trailing position. I'm going to put a little bit of, little bit, bit of a bead right here to decoration, so let me get a point tool and start that bead right here. And bring it around. Same thing on this side. Now I'm going to tuck that in just a little bit. sand that up and this will be done. Okay, this is sanded up to 320. We're going to go ahead and take that off. We're going to remove the chuck. We're going to turn the bottom now. And with the bottom, it's going to be Deja vu all over again, same process, but to mark centers, I'm using a little larger template because the base is a little bit larger and I marked it with uh, my awl. Now this is a little heavier. I don't think, I don't think the step center is going to work as well. I'm going to try something I haven't done before. I'm using a uh, record power six prong chuck, which I've never, never used before, but it's supposed to bite real well into bowl blanks, so let's give that a try. back up. So I'm going to use a drive center I haven't used before. It's a six prong which is uh, from Record Power that's supposed to bite in real well on bowl blanks. So let's give that a try. So I balanced it making adjustments on the tailstock side until it, until it, was, it was running parallel. Locked everything down, tightened it up. Now we're going to face off and put a tenon on it just like we did on the, the, on the top. Because this is a little bit larger blank, I'm going to go ahead and move up to a half inch bowl gouge. And I've got a record power bowl gouge half inch right out of the box, so let's give that a try. Tool rest just a bit. Get the speed up to about a thousand. Is, but it's very hard. Like before, I 
use this to size the tenon. Except for that tenon, I think I am going to switch back to the uh, something a little smaller. Three eighths inch detail down is really handy. on both sides. this off. Again, put another recess in here. Okay, we got a recess, we got it decorated, got it sanded. I'd only say sanded the bottom up to 180. I think that's going to be close enough. Now we're going to go ahead and reverse this on, on my regular chuck jaws. this down, shape this, drill a hole. And with the rest, I'll cut it down on the center. And we're going to come straight in. Check this outside first before we drill a hole here. I've still got a little bit of bark here. Tiny little bit of bark on this side I've got to shape. I'm going to bring this around a little bit more. Just about like, about like 
about what kind of shape decorations I want on here in terms of beads, coves, what have you. Okay, I've remounted the base. I had a little technical glitch that lost some recording, but I drilled a hole deja vu all over again, similar to the top, using that um, one inch Morse taper uh, drill bit mounted in the tailstock. I drilled it uh, one inch deep, and then I started shaping the outside, and that's where we're going to continue. So I've got it slightly round. I want a little more rounded here, so when these two parts touch, they'll they'll be they'll be a ball to ball type of a, a joint, kind of conceal the uh, bead, so to speak. So we're just gonna. Maybe right here. Keep losing the cut here. Okay, so I've got a couple of beads at the bottom. I want to define this one better so I can bring the cut into it. So let's go kind of almost straight in. Okay, I'm gonna drop the handle, roll this around. Define that bead. Bring it around here. We better define that bead. Bring it around here. for that base just a tiny little bit okay all right I want to bring this in a little bit more lower the tool rest a little bit and now I've got, got that that bead defined at the bottom. I want to round this over a little bit more here. Don't want any sharp edges. And I want to go ahead and take a shear scraper and clean that up a little bit. Just get rid of tool marks. Bring this around just a little bit. Let's refine that edge. Shear scrape up on the side. See, I'm getting pretty nice shaving, so I'm getting a pretty good finish, I think. So I'm going to switch to this spear point scraper so I can come in and get in there from this, this part right here. I'm going to just come straight in and bring it around. Conventional scraper, so I need to bring a tool rest up just a little bit just ease it in I think I've got a pretty good surface there I'm happy with. I'm going to go ahead and sand this, and then we'll we'll start working on the uh, spindle. Okay, we got this sanded up to about uh, 320, so we're going to take that off. Now we're going to turn the spindle down the middle. So let's take the chuck off. Okay, we're going to take our spindle blank. We're just going to brace our little finger, or a middle finger in the middle, so we can draw a small square. 
without changing the orientation that gives us a pretty good target to mark center with we can we can find the center of that small small square easier than we can a big square now using your all or in my case I prefer a center punch because that's it's faster and easier and I turned a little mushroom shape makes it a little easier on my hand okay now we're going to put a drive center and a live center in so get this at an appropriate height and get it square to the lathe and now the fastest way for taking one of these things down in my experience is a spindle roughing gouge that's one we're going to use to take it down round before we do anything else get the speed up maybe 1500 anchor the tool ride the bevel don't just jam it in ride the bevel lift the handle till it cuts Now I've got this lathe set on on high torque or uh, bowl mode, so let me change the change the pulley. It'll allow it to go faster and also be quieter. Bring it down about 2,200. And you got a wide edge, so go ahead and turn the flute to get a fresh edge, and you'll have a sharp edge. We won't have to go back to grinders often. Take my skew. I know Richard likes to do it this way. I haven't quite gotten used to it, but it does put the cutting edge closer to the fulcrum so this is a better way to to do it it's just something you need to practice so it'll become comfortable for you it also allows the forces to be directed more to the center rather than Radially, it tends to make it more axially, I guess you could say. Now, this is uh, sweet gum. It's got interlocking grain, so sometimes that swirling grain is, can be a challenge to cut. People hate it as firewood because it's almost impossible to split. But it's, it could be a very pretty wood. It's got some nice, nice color to it. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is decide which is top and bottom. I don't think it makes any difference. I like this color. I think I'll put it at the bottom. So what I need to do is measure the depth of the hole that I drilled like this. And then mark that here. And mark it just a skosh short because I don't want it to bottom out. Okay. And we'll bring that down. And I'll use my beading and parting tool for that. We're going to take it down to an inch. So we get some calipers and set it. And an easy way to set an inch is to set it against the drill bit and there's what you got. And as a relative reference, I know it's got to be smaller than this. So I can go ahead and take it down. And I know it's got to be bigger than this. So it gives me some idea where to go in a hurry. So taking the beading and parting tool. Go straight in for the initial cut. Penetrate the fibers. Then you drop the tool. Some woods, it doesn't make any difference. They're very hard. Some woods like pine and poplar, you really need to do this because you're going to get a frayed edge otherwise. And 
here's where I'm going to take my time. Got a ways to go. Just get a little bit of a slope. Measure that slope. Oh, I got a ways to go. And take this down to the highest point and do it again. It's almost down to the bottom, so I can actually, this is pretty close. I can see the burnish marks and see where I need to go. Just a little bit toward the back. So let's put these in here. I can fit these these points in the same spot if I want to get real particular to get a perfect match, but don't think that's going to be necessary. So I'm just going to get the very back edge here a little bit. And then I'm going to put just a tiny little groove in there to help help the glue. And this ought to be a nice nice mechanical fit and it is okay now we got to do the same thing on the other end so i'm just going to reverse the spindle because i like turning these tenons on the tail tailstock end okay okay so i've got a good mechanical fit for the glue up so i'm ready to finish turning the design mount it back between centers Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a feature, oh, I think maybe two-thirds of the way up, and I'm not going to actually measure two-thirds. I'm just going to do it visually, and I'm going to have a ball right there, and then I'll taper in, taper down, taper this in here, round this off, round this off. Okay, so to get that shape, I'm going to start with a, with a skew and make a, a V-cut. Essentially, it's going to be a large bead. Climb about 15 degrees, catch it with a point, just lift the handle. Bend your knees, kind of use them as springs so you can just drop your body down and come back up. I want to get these V cuts even on both sides. For my shape. Okay, I think that looks good. I'm going to start with a ball, so I'm going to use my spindle gouge. Essentially, it's just a big bead. Uh, really, it's going to be more of uh, less of a ball and more of a mushroom or a uh, pumpkin, I guess. As I come around the bottom, I got to keep swinging that handle out. Being careful not to get the edge into the bottom edge like I'm doing. There Down. I uh, think what I'm going to do, just going to shape it down here. And I think I'm going to put just a couple of beads right here as it, as it makes the join to help disguise it a little bit, make it look a little nicer. So a couple of beads, round that over. Use a beading and parting tool for this. Just because I have that in my hand. All right, now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make a cove on this side. Crisp this one up just a little bit more. Okay. Now, I want to bring this down. The lower part is going to be, oh, I think right about here. The easiest way to do that is probably switch back to spindle roughing gouge because it'll remove a lot of wood.
Well, I'm happy with how it turned out. I like I like my design. I like the look look to it. Uh, simple, but uh, you know, yeah, it's it's good. When it comes to finishing, you don't want to put just any kind of finish. Uh, people sometimes are cleaning their wigs, washing them. They're putting them on wet. You don't want to use uh, anything that's going to be damaged by by water. So you don't want a shellac finish. You don't want a oil finish. You don't want a wax finish. You want to use uh, uh, something like lacquer, or in my case, I think I'm going to use a few coats of uh, Minwax uh, White Bond Poly. This is how I did it. Check out the uh, videos of my other collaboration partners, uh, Richard Reff and Thomas Love, Thomas Etch, and Sam Angelo, and see how they did their their uh, wig stand. Remember, y'all come, y'all. <laughs> remember, y'all stay safe. Come on back. You hear?